first of all, can I just say how beautiful it is out um, with all the colors? Like you got the, like the red clover with the purple aster and the yellow goldenrod. Like, and then the leaves are starting to change color. It's just the colors this morning. It's just, well, or recently, it's beautiful. So, and then you got the white of the Queen Anne's lace. It's beautiful. So, uh, what I was thinking about talking this morning, and oh, did you guys notice I have my new phone holder? Um, I, so I wanted to talk about a couple tools that I've been learn or that I've been using lately, um, to help, um, you know, just kind of combat, you know, negative feelings or not negative, not to combat, but just tools that are helping me. Um, so the first tool is I'm trying to be not trying. I am being grateful for everything. I, the, um, the other day, I don't remember if you guys remember, um, I told you that I ran out of gas and, um, so I ran out of gas, but the thing was that on my way, I, um, I found a caterpillar for my friends or for my, um, my kids daycare. And, and I was thinking about that the other day, like if there was no milkweed around and if I hadn't had ran out of gas and found that, then then the little, the little guy would have died. Like I, I was able to save him and that just, it like kind of had a silver lining in it. Like I'm so thankful that I ran out of gas to help the caterpillar. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but so, you know, looking for being grateful for everything. Um, I was listening to uh, Brene Brown again she gave an example of um, how we tend to look at the, the negative side. So <clears throat> she gave an example. Like she said, let's say there is um, a family of four. They're driving and they just had a great time with their family. And they're on the way back. They're on their way home. And the little boy starts singing. And the sister joins in. And, and um, the parents, they find it funny and they start laughing and they join in and everyone's singing in the car as they go down the highway and then what happens and of course I said a car crash <laughs> and she said yeah because we are uh we seem like when things are really great for us like we tend to like waiting for the other street to drop we tend to um think about what could go wrong and, and she said, instead of, you know, feeling that feeling of something's going to go wrong, like, you know, this is a, a perfect moment. What's going to go wrong? Like what, where's the shoe going to drop? And, and she said to combat that when that happens is to practice gratitude. Like instead of feeling the fear of like, oh my goodness, this is all great. Something's going to go wrong is I am so grateful for my family. Um, I am so grateful to hear my kids laugh. I am so grateful for them not listening because it gives me more patience. <laughs> and stuff like that. So, so gratitude, I've been trying to practice a lot more gratitude. You know, waking up in the morning and thinking about what I'm grateful for. Uh, going to bed at night and thinking about what I, you know, what happened during the day that I was thankful for, you know, what, where can I find the gratitude in, in spots in my life? Yeah, it could be anywhere. I mean, just driving now, you know, I'm grateful for my car, even though it's, you know, maybe not the best car, but it still gets me places. I am thankful for this time with you guys. I am thankful for a daycare so that I can work, um, you know, just gratitude, just in this moment, I just thought of like five things off the top of my head, and 
So what are you guys grateful for today? You know, it could be anything. It could be as silly as, you know, I don't know. I can't think of a silly grateful because I think it's all good. Um, thankful for my toothbrush so I can to brush my teeth so my teeth don't fall out. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's one tool. Another tool is I find, and I don't know about you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure probably everyone does this. So let's say you have, um, <clears throat> like a conversation or something happened to you in your day that was not the best. And, you know, we rehearse it in our minds. We rehearse it, rehearse it. And like, we could say like, you know, in our mind, we could talk about different things that we could say. Well, first of all, there one is boundaries. Like if someone said something that hurt your feelings, you could say, you could tell them, um, or, you know, you could tell them your boundaries, you know, I love you. Uh, you just can't talk to me like that. Or, you know, I'm, I'm still working on that. Although I don't really get too many people treating me like, <laughs> um, badly. So, but another tool, um, so when you're doing that, is I ask myself, okay, Emily, what is happening in the present moment? Is that person here? No. Is that, um, is that situation what's happening right now? No. What is happening right here in the now? Right now, right now I'm driving and I'm talking and I'm recording a video. That's all that needs to happen right now and I don't really need to worry about anything else I don't need to worry about a conversation maybe if a conversation <clears throat> maybe if something happened I could call the person up and uh, I'm still working on that but um, but yeah so what is happening in the present moment what is happening in the here and now like focus I, and I'm telling myself, uh, focus on the present moment, what is happening in the here and now, and how, what do I need in this moment? Not half hour ago, not yesterday, not, you know, tomorrow. What is happening in the present moment, and what do I need right now? Do I need some rest? Like, am I tired? Like, is that why I'm thinking about this and letting my thoughts go all wild? Am I tired? And, you know, am I in my five-year-old stage where I'm just reacting and I'm not processing? Um, something I just heard this morning talking about that is when you're in your, um, when you're in your feelings, when you're in your reaction, re your reactive, um, you know, thoughts and stuff when something, someone says something and you react. It's, um, I just heard, a uh, Joe Dispenza. He's a little, he's a little kooky, but, um, but I do like some of his stuff. And, um, and he was saying that you can't see the label when you're in the jar. And I thought that was that was awesome. That was an awesome way to describe that. So when you're in your feelings, it's really hard to know to label them. Like, you know, when you're angry and you're just like, you know, when I'm angry, you know, I have a hard time processing my feelings and I have a hard time like, okay, Emily, you're angry. Uh, okay. That's, it's okay. It's okay to be angry. You know, let's feel it for a little bit and then, and then, and then we're, and then we're done. And, um, so when we're in the jar of our own feelings, we can't see the label. It's, it's hard. We have to pause and we have to look around and we have to be like, oh yeah, it's okay. I, I know. And it takes practice. I'm still, I'm still learning this. And, but I really like that analogy. You can't, you can't see the label when you're inside the jar. That was, that was nice. So... Um, those are my thoughts for this morning and thank you so much guys for watching and if you, um, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe to my channel. If not, that's fine. Ooh, red clover. Um, I have to collect red clover. I've been 
drinking it. I need some more. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you later, and I love you guys, and have a great day.